Hey everyone, before we get started, I just want to give a massive shout out to Sega for sending me a copy of Sonic Colors Ultimate. Colors was the first Sonic game I ever 100% completed, and having been a Sonic fan my whole life, this being the first Sonic game I was given to by Sega just feels amazing. They didn't ask me to say any of this, they didn't ask for a video, I have free range to say whatever I want to say about it. I just wanted to thank them. Also, I will address the launch day elephant in the room. The footage you're about to see was captured off the Switch version the day before launch. Blind Scroll Games are already working on fixes to some of the issues and seem to really be listening to what people have to say, so good on them for that. By the time you watch this video, maybe some of the things I talk about will already have been patched, but this is how the game is day one. I want you to keep something in mind. Making games is hard. Porting an existing game that you didn't develop in the first place to not only a handful of new systems and not only with a new framework but a new engine entirely with added mechanics and features isn't easy. And yet somehow they managed to make the game pretty damn faithful to the original with added things here and there. In my opinion, the game is still the great Sonic game we got on the Wii, it's just horribly unpolished and particularly for the Switch version, unoptimized. Don't get me wrong, they don't get a pass for releasing it in its current state, but at its core, it is not a bad game. I still had just as much fun playing it at 25 as I did when I was 14. That being said, your experience may vary, so approach this game with caution if you plan to buy it today, or wait until it's a bit more optimized. But all in all, thanks again to Sega for sending me this game. Okay, on with the show. Squirrel Games. Hmm. Well, they've worked on a bunch of cool games. Bioshock, Borderlands, Mass Effect, Blind Squirrel Engine. Oh no, why'd you change frameworks? The Hedgehog Engine was perfectly fine! Where were you hiding the cup of coffee? Also, robots drink coffee? I love these new customization options. I think more Sonic games moving forward should have them just add a little bit of flair, but why is your very first option these puke green gloves? Okay, this is a slight nitpick and very fixable, but Sonic's animation here seems to be using a blend of his running animation and one of his starting animations for some reason, and so that causes him to have his eyelids slightly close after every blink. Admittedly, this is a minuscule thing, but it bothers the hell out of me as an animator. I want that! Okay. For your profile picture, you can choose from an array of photos, including Sega West and Sega East. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, Sega West's logo is a slightly darker shade of blue, and Sega East's logo is a lighter blue and slightly zoomed in. Totally different. On top of that, you can also have your photo be characters from Sega properties that haven't seen a new game in over 20 years. This first loading screen was 20 seconds long. Now, fortunately, the rest of the loading screens aren't 06 levels of long, but apparently this happens every time you boot up the game and load a level for the first time, and that's just not a good first impression. Dash rooms give you a speed boost. Rainbow dash rings also give you a bonus. So, I don't know if the audio is broken or what, I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't intentional, but sometimes Tails' navigation tips only come out from one audio channel, which you can do if it's a stereo output, but why would you do that? He loves to hear his own lips flap, but I gotta hand it to the eggster. This place is epic. Sha, yeah, bro, this place is swagadocious. We should like totally bang up the bucket of fish later. I've heard that the sushi there is unequivocally fucking bussin. Seriously, if there was ever any evidence that the writers of the game had never played a Sonic game before, Sonic's first line of dialogue is proof enough. Also, this has to stop being a thing with remasters. I understand that you would have to re-render everything, but for the love of God, upscale the pre-rendered cutscenes. For 11 years, this game was a Wii exclusive which only allowed up to 480p. You're putting this on consoles and PC that allow up to 4K. That's four and a half times as big. And what kills me is that the opening and final cutscenes look great. True, it would be pretty hard to miss a giant floating space amusement park surrounded by planets. Still, an evil plot? I don't know. Hales, it's Eggman. When has he not had an evil plot? Wow, plot or not, you can't be mad at this view. This place has taken beauty to the next level. You guys realize you've been in space dozens of times, right? I feel like you should be used to this view by now. Just surprised that it was so easy to sneak in here. Uh, I wouldn't say it was that easy. I can't believe somebody was dumb enough to leave the keys in this thing. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy. Oh man, this thing's got crazy fast acceleration. Look, you call this fast? It's faster than you. 
So, Colors Ultimate does away with the live system in favor of the new Tails Rescue mechanic, which is more of a checkpoint system, which makes me wonder why they even have checkpoints in the game. But I'm assuming the reason they made it Tails is to give them something extra to do, and from a game perspective, I think it's great. Narratively, though, we kind of just accept lives for what they are. When you run out of Tails Rescues, does Tails just decide to stop helping you? Why? Gotta connect the framostatic capacitor to the maximizing modulationizer. Techno babble, techno babble, techno babble. Didn't you see? I absorbed those aliens and got powered up with like some kind of wild energy. And after a few seconds, they'd pop out of me. Uh, I find that hard to believe. Are you fucking kidding me? You've seen this guy run at the speed of sound and fight a literal water god, a giant technology-enhanced lizard with an entire space station up its butt, a metal version of him that enhanced itself with its creator's battleships, a literal time and space god, and a demon of darkness sleeping in the Earth's core by using seven gems that power him with chaos energy, turning his fur yellow, making his quills defy gravity, and give him the ability to fly, but aliens giving him special power-ups is too hard to believe? Uh, looks like you forgot to add a space in between that comma and seriously. Hasta la bye bye, sucker! Hasta la bye bye. Just tighten this last bolt. Does Michael Jackson exist in the Sonic world, do you think? Or is Sonic just being weird? <clears throat> Who are you and what is happening to your people? Is that racist? Like, he's doing that thing people do when they think that speaking louder and slower somehow makes the other person who doesn't speak your language understand you. I feel like that's racist. Yeah, uh, I think your machine still has some bugs. Yeah, I think I can figure this out, though. Okay, he said his name is Yakker. How did you fix that by pressing a button? Don't you need to alter the code or whatever? Wisps with a W. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. Ugh, breaking the fourth wall. When I was running around trashing robots, I saw a map that had a couple of interesting places. You mean the map that's literally right behind you? Uh-oh, that switch just released some Eggman robots! Yes, Tails, I can see that. You don't need to warn me. Show, don't tell, game. Could you not have given the park tokens their own sound effect? Why do they need to share it with the Tails Rescue? Hey Tails, you missed the BBBE. Huh? Best boss beating ever. God, 11 years really makes you forget how terrible the dialogue in this game is. Uh, what? So I didn't realize this until I got the achievement, but the Tails Rescue saves everything you've collected up until the moment you die, meaning the red rings, park tokens, and if you fall down a bottomless pit, your ring count. The thing is, once Tails rescues you, everything in the level reloads, meaning you can just farm rings and park tokens, and I don't know if that was intentional or not. I don't know how I didn't notice this until now, but the graphic for the checkpoint bonus is misplaced, right? Like, it's supposed to be behind the text and not to the side. I'm not crazy, right? Okay, I swear I think the Tails rescue is a good mechanic, but implementing it into a game that was designed without it has some... interesting results. Like, here in Starlight Carnival Act 6, it's a purely 2D level, which, unless you're going for the red rings like I was, is pretty straightforward. But I'm guessing they thought the level was really easy and that you probably wouldn't die too frequently in 2D, so when he brings you back, you basically unlock the Z-axis and are able to move in 3D, which makes a 2D level really hard to navigate. Rival Rush is another great concept, having you basically race Metal Sonic in a time attack fashion, but its presentation is subpar, and that's being nice. It has no sound effects, hardly any animations, it reminds me of a mobile or fan game. What the hell happened there? Great, now I have to restart the entire race for something that wasn't my fault! <laughs> to get to me, you're going to have to go through your best friend! Or you could just... jump. Then start wailing away. <laughs> Get it? Wailing away. <laughs> okay. Five generators? Well, I've already leveled two. So, if my math is correct, that leaves us three more of those bad boys to take out. If your math is correct? I know it's a joke, but it's played so straight that it makes me think that subtracting two from five was actually hard for you, Tails. The bones connected to the talk bone. The talk bones connected to the mouth bone. Them bones? 
Does the Bible exist in the Sonic universe? Well, I still can't believe he kidnapped a whole planet. How does somebody do that? What do you mean you can't believe that? He's done it before. And he used chains then, too. And there's the generator. It seems like these guys are getting harder and harder to find. I know for a fact these guys are getting harder and harder to beat. They're really not. Also, didn't I fight this thing already? Why does this game only have four bosses? Please remember, all planets in Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park are, as far as you know, wholly owned properties of Eggman Enterprises and its subsidiaries. All unauthorized photography, video reproduction, or shutting down of generators is strictly prohibited. Thank you. Eggman? I am going to save this planet, and I am going to free these aliens! No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! We can just forget about the whole talking to dead robots thing, right? Nope. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> well, come on. I've seen you save the day a lot of times, but I've never seen you talk to a pile of metal. Didn't he do that in Sonic Heroes after defeating Metal Overlord? Or does that not count? So, the Jade Wisp from Team Sonic Racing was implemented into this game, and it's a pretty cool addition to the Wisps, definitely better than Frenzy in my opinion, and as with the other Wisps, Ghost has its own theme which plays as you use it, but for some reason it's just... not playing here? Yup. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, try the newest dining experience here at Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park, the Bucket of Sushi! Now with fish! As opposed to... What? Hey, did somebody here order a clobbering? Are you sure? It says somebody ordered an extra large clobbering topped with everything. Hmm, okay. Tell you what, I can't take this thing back, so I'll give you an extra large clobbering for nothing. Oh my god, just stop oh, talking and fight the damn thing! It's almost difficult. Sonic, you did it! Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Thanks. Hey, we both deserve some kind of reward. But you didn't do anything. We did it, dude. <laughs> we? I don't remember you fighting off any insane robots. True. Well, good job to you on inventing a translator that allowed us to speak to the aliens and figure out exactly what we needed to do so we weren't running around the park looking like idiots. <laughs> oh no, wait. That was me. Okay, you cocky little sh**. We still would have gone around destroying Eggman's robots without the translator. Sonic figured out how to use the wisps before you finished it. And after you did, all Yakker said amounted to Eggman bad guy, which we knew already, so nothing changed. Really, if anything, the Miles Electric was a comic relief tool. We didn't need it. You talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. There's nobody else here, so I must be talking to you! Well, first of all, Orbot's there too. But second, a taxi driver reference? Oh my god. I'm gonna go higher! I'm pissing on the moon! <laughs> Your plans have been crushed by Sonic for like, eh, ever. He stopped you like it's his job or something. In fact, I can't remember a plan he didn't stop. Well, unless Sonic Riders is in its own continuity, then Eggman technically wins in the first one. I feel the ground shaking under my feet and see plumes of dust rising and rubble tumbling and aliens running for their lives. Yeah, I get a bad feeling. So, how about you and me make like Eggman's hairline and recede? Uh, this isn't joke time. This is running to the space elevator time. That's it. That's this entire game. Okay, so Terminal Velocity Act 1 took me an embarrassingly long time to beat because of this motherfucker, the big chaser. I don't remember him being an issue when I was a kid, so I was getting really frustrated when he kept killing me because there was no way I could dodge his lasers fast enough, and I kept running out of boost. Come to find out that the Switch version doesn't render VFX properly, meaning I couldn't see the telegraphed lasers on top of him before he shoots them, making this way more difficult than it should have been. In fact, the same was true in Aquarium Park, but I managed to have enough boost to just ignore him that time, and this should have clued me into the VFX thing because its explosion didn't render. Leaving so soon! There are no lines, and I've saved the best rides for last! At least let me stab your hand so you can come back in! I know you're trying to be clever with this whole amusement park pun thing, but it's just coming off lame. So just say you're going to destroy us and stop embarrassing yourself. 
Curse you, Sonic! Not only do you foil my plans, but you foil my speeches as well! Oh, that wasn't a speech so much as it was a series of amusement park themed threats. What did you call me? Oh, Mega Wisp. God, even the console games are getting me now. Oh, come on! You couldn't render the Eggman fireworks? That's part of the final boss's identity in these games, starting with this one. We interrupt Sonic Colors to bring you the level design from Sonic Forces. We interrupt Sonic Galaxy to bring you Super Mario Colors. Oh my god, these credits are 29 minutes long. No, seriously, these credits are so absurdly long that halfway through the music just... stops. Thanks, credits. I really enjoy being reminded that this game came out during the C-Virus pandemic. No, seriously, you get an achievement for sitting through the credits, as you should! Okay, epilepsy warning for this last sin. So I didn't run into it during my playthrough, but I had seen online what I like to call the unlimited colors glitch and wanted to see if I could recreate it. Apparently what happens here is that the game doesn't clear the buffer or textures when you switch planets. So when you enter a planet, back out, and then enter a level on another planet, the game tries recalling assets from the previous planet, but because they don't belong on this level, the game doesn't know what to do and just renders broken textures. The only reason I bring this glitch up in particular is because it's way too easy to recreate. I got it on my first try. But I guess they weren't lying. Sonic's there, kind of, and there are colors. Like way too many of them. I want that! Hey everyone, Charai5 here. Thanks so much for watching my CinemaSins pastiche of everything wrong with Sonic Colors Ultimate. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon and my channel members. If you want to be featured in future videos, then consider helping me out a little bit each month, or hit that join button. To those who do support, stay awesome. You guys should head over to CinemaSynth, the awesome people that I pastiche. They also host sister channels that cover music videos, brands, and other topics. If you have some time, why not check out everything wrong with Sonic Colors DS? Until next time, stay safe and stay awesome. This is Char i 5 signing off.